Hi everybody, I'm Ethan Felizar Castillo. I'm Stephanie Colon. And welcome to the CK Cafe. Woo! This is a uh, conversation that we're gonna be having every single week with a bunch of different creatives in the film world. We're gonna talk about filmmaking in general, about the film business, amazing projects that independent filmmakers are making. Yes. And that's sort of the key that we want to focus on. It's like independent films yeah. um, and like keeping things independent. So, you know, we at CK Films, we both produce with CK Films. We're, you know, so excited to keep our films as independent as humanly possible. And what we want to do with this show is have a platform where other creatives that are also doing independent work can like show off what they're doing and have a place where they can speak about it. Yeah. So welcome to the CK Cafe. Yeah, thank you so for joining us. We are so excited. You know, first and foremost, I thought we'd give a little background on CK and CK Great. Films in like general. It. So uh, for those of you who don't know what CK Films is, CK Films is a uh, production company that um, is a branch of multimedia production company, CK Productions, which you can see right here on these mugs for anyone, anyone watching. Um, and CK Productions is, we do a little bit of everything. Um, we do stuff in theater, we do stuff in music, but our, our film branch has always been one that I've been so proud of since you know, I started CK back in 2013. Um, it's just, has brought me so much joy and like I've met some of the most amazing people through it. Um, and you know, we have since our start, we have produced a bunch of short films. We've produced over 85 music videos and are currently working on our first feature films and more shorts and more music videos yes. and a little bit of everything, a bunch of really cool creative work, documentary work. So we're excited. The future yeah. of CK films it's is very bright. Yeah. So I, met you, Stephanie. Let's talk a little bit about how we met. We were working yeah. on um, a concept piece yes. for a feature that we are now writing together. So excited. Which I'm very excited about. Yes. We won't say too much about it because it's such yeah. early stages. But we met in a really interesting way because you were an actress I and I yeah. was directing you. Yeah. Um, and our, our friendship and relationship has just grown from there. You know, I think what I love best about this industry, I mean, I guess it's like this in all industries, but in this industry particularly, it's like one connection leads to another connection leads to another oh, yeah. connection, you know? And so like the long story to us getting together was I went to acting school with a girl and we became friends. And then she introduced me to somebody else and they were like, try out for like audition for this play I'm in. And through that, I met an actor and we became friends. And he introduced me to someone who put me on the film with you. Like, it was like this long story. But, it's a person um, to a person, person to another person. person but another like person. those connections are amazing yeah. and they can make our story so special um, as people who work together and as friends. And um, I came onto your set like really excited about the script. How long have you been acting before we met? So we met, what year was it? It was 20. That was 21, 20. That was last year, 22. 2022, yeah. 2022. So, okay, yeah. Oh, wow. Maybe like summer, end of summer? Summer 2022. Like 2022. So how yeah. long before that had you been working in the industry? So my story is interesting because I like, was acting as a child, loved it. Um, not professionally, but like, you know, doing everything I could in acting and sure. then started to kind of pursue professional acting like in high school um, and then went to college. And my like, you know, Puerto Rican parents were like, yeah, get a real degree. And I got a degree in nursing and um, I love nursing, like shout out to the nurses. I still do nursing. Um, but then I just like didn't see anything creative for so many years. Yeah. And it was genuinely like a piece of me was missing. Like the best That's way that I can imagine. describe yeah. it is I say like, I was holding my breath for all these years in between. And then um, my first like half a breath was I started painting again. And it was like, oh, that feels kind of good. It's like exercise, that creative muscle. And then for a few years, I kept saying like, I want to get back into acting. And then in 2019, I started taking classes again and just getting comfortable, like being in my skin and like, you know, getting used to being in front of a camera and just like That's going so with cool. the impulses. Um, so you saw me, you met me in 2022. So a few years into getting back to where I used to be and um, yeah, it was a fun journey and I'm so glad that we met on yeah. that like really fun project. No, me too, me too. And I'm excited to see where that project has evolved to. It was so small, it was like such a small idea. 
and then it was just meant to be like a little short. And then at first it was a teaser, then it was a little short, then it was like, oh, maybe this could be something bigger. Yeah. And then it was, now it's turned into something completely different. Yeah. And it's just, it's such a special piece. I can't say much about it, but it's yeah. just, it's such a beautiful secret. piece. I'm, I'm so excited secret, to like <laughs> super, like dive into it a lot with you. Yeah. But you said something there that I think is so true. It's like anybody, I think part of the, the mantra behind CK, when we had started it, was like the idea of a creative kid, right? And that's like what CK stands for is creative kid. Yeah. Um, and I always, uh, it was, a, it was a, a, uh, an old acting technique that one of my acting teachers once told me was that he's like, hey, you know, in order to really create and really get this role down the right way, you want to wipe all of that, that slate, all of the, every, every bit of insecurity and all those things that we have inside that, that we put walls up yep. it, for ourselves yeah. um, that don't allow us to express ourselves and be fully vulnerable, um, tear them all down yeah. right? and go back to when you were a child, when you were a creative kid. Yeah. Um, and that, that always helped me. And I was like 15, 16 at the time. And I remember, you know, still a kid, but like even thinking, you know, when you're, you're 15, 16 in the United States high school system, there's a lot of pressures, yeah. there's a lot of things that are happening. And it's like, you, you start to build up these walls. So, so really bring them crashing down. It's important to get into that creative mindset, no matter how yeah. juvenile it feels, right? So it's so beautiful that you say that because like, it's wild that creativity, when it leaves our life, when it's something we feel we're destined to do, and mm -hmm. I know you really well, so I feel yeah. like I can say, I think you are like destined to be 100%. working yeah. in the creative arts in some capacity. So it's like when you're not doing that, it feels like a part of you is missing. And 100%, it's like, it's, 100%. Yeah, I mean, I always, I tell every friend of mine that I have out there who are, who's like, still doing it, but like kind of half in, half out. And I get it, we gotta survive, we, gotta, mm -hmm. we have to have jobs, we have families, like, I totally get it. But it's like every friend I know in the independent film world or theater world or music world, I always encourage them like, don't, just don't lose it, right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe you come to a point in your life where you can't pursue it and can't be your sole form of income, mm -hmm. but like don't lose that creative spark because the 100%. second you do, it's not yourself anymore, yeah. right? You're not yourself and then like what you said about the walls is really like so interesting because you start to like, I don't know, society and adulthood and all these different pressures make you build up walls that yeah. were not there before 100%. that make even what you love to do difficult. Like that's what I found. Like. So I'm glad you met me in 2022 because between 2019 <laughs> and 2022 was me trying to like break down all these stupid walls and insecurities that never existed when I was a kid just acting and doing what I love, you know? Um, and so that's been the goal to get back to a childlike state and like, I love that that's what CK represents. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and I feel like now more than ever, like right now, you know, in the last year, you mm -hmm. and I have started working together on yeah. like the producing side of yeah. things. Um, so originally acting, directing yeah. sort of relationship and has molded into us being producing partners, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, we do, we do every production together for those of you who are listening yes. or watching. So every film production that we're currently working on, that we've worked on in 2023 and beyond, it's all stuff that we're doing together. And yeah. one of the things that I'm so excited about for you as a producer is like you have this this like re-energized like excitement and optimism but also like work ethic that so many people lose because they just they you you left it for a little bit and yeah. now you came back to yeah. it yeah and you leaving and coming back i think truly is the best thing that you could have ever done because you never became you never became bitter about it like you've yeah. almost now have this like I don't know. You have this energy about you that's so exciting. And every, cause yeah. every time you tell me, you tell me like, oh, I was in this place, like, you know, mentally and, and like physically because I wasn't in creative arts. And I'm always like, now I look at you and I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine a person like you not being involved in this. Yeah. You're so good at it. Yeah. So, you know, and like, obviously at acting, you are wonderful, but as a producer, I've told you this, you are truly, I think one of the, the best independent producers out there. And I think like, and you're, you're somewhat new to it. And, yeah. I, and I'm like, where you're gonna end up being in like five to 10 years from now. I mean, I think, I think it's gonna Thank be amazing. Thank you. So, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I it's like, exciting. I feel like I'm so grateful to like 2022 and meeting you and just like you, Rosie, like we just really clicked and um, 
you opened me up to like a side of filmmaking that I didn't know about, right? Yeah. Like I was in front of the camera, which was great and I love that, I love that. But like learning about this behind the camera work um, and producing specifically, like it just really has married all sides of my life. Like the creative and acting side that was missing for so long and totally. the like filmmaking side, but also like this business side of me that's also been in there and I didn't hate, like I don't want it to ever come across like that I didn't enjoy the years of my life in between because I did. Yeah. But like this is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And no, so like it's really exciting to be where you're supposed to be. And I feel like I see that same excitement in you about producing specifically, 100%. which is why I love working with you because you're not just like doing it. It's not just like a job. Like it is a job, but you're excited about it. And oh, then yeah. I feel like we make each other excited about oh, it. Oh yeah. No, I think here's the thing is I think people d just don't get what a producer does. Yeah. Right? It's like and I think I have a firm belief that every actor, every director, every writer should learn the inner workings of what it takes to be a producer, whether they become one or not, yeah. totally yeah. different, t it's totally up to them, right? Mm -hmm. But so many, there's a laundry list of wonderful actor, producers, director, producers, right? Steven Spielberg, one of the best producers yeah. that was out there, yeah. right? A wonderful director, but I, I honestly, I think there's an argument that could be made that his him as a producer is even stronger yeah. than him as a director. Yeah. And then there's other people too, like Bradley Cooper is one of the best producer actors out there. He has how many Oscar noms just from being a producer, 100%. right? And the thing yeah. is, I think people just don't understand what a producer really does. And one way that I was described to it once, and I think, I think it's an excerpt from a book, but a friend had told me this, um, and I can't remember the book, otherwise I'd give you credit, whoever you are. But um, it was <clears throat> about a dinner party. And I might have told you this before, but I'm going to repeat it. Sorry, tell me. <laughs> um, everybody is a producer. Every single human being is a producer every day in their life. And for example, you put a dinner party on the table, right? If you're having a dinner party, what do you need to do, right? A million things. You need to figure out, okay, what am I going to serve? What, um, what, how am I going to decorate? Or who am I inviting? Or, you know, what are we doing after we eat dinner, right? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be dessert? Are we going to play games? Uh, you know, what time is everyone coming? All this stuff. <clears throat> All these things you have to think about. That's what a producer does. Yeah, right. And, and you think about it, right? It's like, um, so, you know, we'll start off the very basic side, right? For, for us, we look at it from like development, before pre-production, development of a script, mm -hmm. right? That's you just deciding that you're having a dinner party and conceptualizing what you're going to do, why you want to have this dinner party. Maybe it's a birthday. Yeah. Maybe it's an a anniversary. Maybe it's a friend's giving, whatever it is, right? But you're, you're conceptualizing this. Then you enter pre-production. And for us, it would be, you know, maybe starting fundraising, maybe figuring out certain things with the, the shoot and actual production, um, you know, finalizing crew, cast, all that stuff. For uh, a, an everyday human being, it's figuring out who you're going to invite to the party. It's what you're going to specifically cook. Yeah. It's how much money can I spend at this dinner party to make this thing happen? You have to budget that. You're, all of that. 100%. You have to do all of it. Yeah. Production is you actually making everything and the actual party itself. Post-production is everything you're doing afterwards, making yeah. sure that everyone had a good time, all of this stuff, right? So it's like every single day. Sending out day, thank you notes. Sending yeah. out thank you notes, whatever it is. So every day we are producers. And the job of a producer is the same as a host of a dinner party. It's making sure that you create a something that people are going to remember for a very, very long time and having passion behind that thing, yeah. right? Because every good dinner party, you remember, right? Like I think of a dinner party that it was really, really great. Yeah. And I remember it and I can think of it fondly. It's a good memory that lives in my head. It's the same idea when we're making a movie. Right? It's like we want to make something that's going to last and it's going to stick with people yeah. um, and that's going to be impactful. Or, you know? So it's a weird example, but I think it works. No, you know? that's and a I, great analogy, and you have not told me that before. There you go. Actually. Cool. So there you go. That's the yeah. first time. And what about you? Like, how did you end up in this industry? Like, I know your journey was very different than mine. Yeah, I mean, I started when I was 13. Um, well, I started acting when I was like, like 13, 12, 13 years old. Um, and I started acting in like my middle school musical. Um, and I, I joined a acting school. I had a great time. I learned a lot. Um, and very quickly I became very passionate about it. I'm from Long Island, not too far from the city. Um, and my parents would let me take the train, Long Island Railroad into Manhattan and audition and take acting classes at, at 13 years old, Man. um, because they worked full time. They could not take me, but I really started feeling passionate about it. And I wanted to do more than just a community theater production or school production. And I was very lucky. I mean, I, I, 
from a young age, from about when I was 13, 14, I, I started booking like commercial work. Um, I did a lot of commercials in Spanish. Um, and I started doing voiceover work and like little projects here and there, some small regional theater. Um, and I got to have like a little, like three, four year window where I auditioned for maybe like, I mean, probably like a hundred projects wow. and learning that when you're that young and by yourself, essentially, like my parents are wonderful and they're amazing and so supportive, but you know, they're not, they don't have an entertainment background at all. Uh, you know, being from originally from El Salvador, you know, they're, they're, they're very interested in entertainment, but that wasn't something that was accessible for them. Yeah. Um, but they put us on like me and my siblings to entertainment at all times. Like we were watching theater when I was five years old and going to wow. the movies and, you know, watching movies at home. My dad has a huge DVD collection. So like we've always been around the arts. So me acting just kind of like felt natural and like felt like I wanted to pursue it. Mm -hmm. and then when I turned 15, I wanted to direct. I was like, I got, I got an opportunity to direct a production of Once Upon a Mattress at a local community theater. <laughs> it was going to be just me directing like a bunch of my peers. Yeah. Um, and I directed it, fell in love with it, and opened up CK um, when I was 15. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So to the, December 16, 2013, um, we opened up CK officially. I had to pitch it to my parents, and then I had to... We went out to a restaurant in Hop Hog, Long Island called Butterfields and I pitched it to an accountant and a lawyer and they helped me out and I got the concept like my parents helped me. They, that's what they gave me for that's Christmas amazing. that year. They gave me a corporate seal wow. um, and, and I had a business and like from then on, I've, that's been my, my primary source of income. I didn't go to college like in the traditional sense. I went to an acting school, but um, I didn't go, I don't have a you know, bachelor's degree, no shade against anyone who does. I think college is extremely important, but, you know, I got a chance to take a different path. Um, and by the time, you know, I was college aged, we already had, you know, two films um, with CK Films, one of them that had done extremely well and had gone to a bunch of festivals. Wow. Um, and we had already produced like 20, 30 shows. So like theatrical shows. So we just kept it going and we kept it moving and, uh, yeah, it's been ever changing, ever evolving. We've done work uh, on Long Island in like one theater, then we opened up our own theater in another part of Long Island. I ha we had an office in East Williamsburg, closed that. Now we have an office out here in lovely Long Island City, yes. Queens, um, where we've been for the last almost three years. So it's, yeah, it's just been such a, such a crazy journey. And then like on top of that, like finding my love for directing and writing and other things too. I mean, I work right now, you know, I'm working in like distribution and marketing for films as well, you know, outside of CK. Yeah. So like I've been, I've been blessed to work on so many amazing projects, you know? Um, so it's, it's great. It's been a wonderful thing. You know, I really, I love hearing about the different journeys that people take in filmmaking. And like you started so young, which yeah. is so beautiful. Right. And so like, you know, I think marrying like your skills and my skills is such an interesting thing because you come from 10 years almost right yeah, yeah, of yeah. experience yeah. in this industry even though you're younger than I am and I'm newer at this side of the business but then I have 10 years of business experience of outside of this no, it's and amazing. so bringing together these perspectives I think is beautiful and I think it's also nice to know like it's not you're never too young or too old to like pursue the thing that you love, That's right? It. Like when you find your passion, go for it. And it I makes life like such an interesting journey. So I want to give you, as we're wrapping up, some okay. rapid fire questions. Oh my gosh, I'm going to give them to you back. Uh, I'm going to okay. throw them right back. So every week we're going to try to do these <laughs> rapid fire questions um, where we ask the creatives that we are having on our show um, some, some key questions that we think yeah. help inform their creativity. Episode one. Woo. Let's All do it. Right. Go ahead. You, so, you're going to give them to me. I'm going to give them to you. And I'm going to give so, them right back to you. Question one. Right, um, go ahead. What is the best filmmaking advice you've ever received? <sighs> this one's really hard. The best filmmaking advice I ever have I received. I don't even know what answer I'm going to give to this question. <laughs> so good luck. Honestly, the best filmmaking advice I ever received was just make it. Right. Like just just get out there and shoot the thing. Make that's it. Fair. Right. Yeah. And I think that it's I know it's it kind of feels like a cop out, but like I think it's so true is like, uh, you know, I'm one to like, I feel like at this point of our career and this point of CK's journey, I don't feel like I apply that all the time, but I still do to some degree, right? Yeah. Like before I used to just make things, right? Like I have a film that's not out yet, but you know, I just grabbed the camera and turned it on and started shooting. And, and I think that's cool. I it's think amazing. there's like cool, yeah. there's, there's something cool about doing that, but 
Um, there's also something cool about properly planning something, yes. and, but but actually making which it, is what we do, which what we do, <laughs> which what we, especially at this stage in our yeah. career where it's like you know we're not maybe we're not making movies for a hundred bucks anymore, and we're making them for a lot more, right? Yeah. But at the same time, you know, it's it, the same thing still applies, right? Make it maybe might not mean just make it on your iPhone anymore for us, um, but if it does mean that for you, then do it. And but do if it. not, yeah. you know, make it meaning hey, stop holding on to that script, stop. Stop waiting until the perfect moment, right? Yeah. Start making a plan on how to make it, right? Like the, every film can be made. You just have to figure out the plan to get there. But, 100%. Yeah. What's the best filmmaking advice you've ever received? Oh, God. So I have some advice. It's not necessarily filmmaking advice um, or wasn't specific to this industry, but I think it applies and it was just to like work and your career and whatever you want to pursue in general. And it was don't let perfect be the enemy of good. I love it. Yeah. And so, you know, in what we do, right? We're taking something from conception to realization and you have to have a structure and you have to have a plan. But at the end of the day, if you are too rigid in adhering to that structure, then it'll never happen, right? Yeah. Like, and so you'll be in the phase of like, you know, people starting a project, never finishing it or editing it forever or taking too long on set and they run out of money because they can't film anymore, right? And so I think, um, you know, it's important to have a structure but so that you can then, if you need to, throw away the structure yeah, because you have a yeah. plan. Um, and so I think that was great advice. And I think that's freeing, right? Like, if you have to be perfect, that's a lot of stress. I but if so you too. know, like, you're going to do good and you're going to do the best, then, like, that comes across. Question number two. Okay. What are your top three favorite films? I'm ready to answer this. Are you? I'm a big letterbox <laughs> user. I know Follow you watch a lot letterbox. of films. So oh like, God, what are your top I watch, three? I have AMC A-list. We watch three Shout movies a week. Shout out to AMC A-list. Yeah, sponsor <laughs> us because I will talk about it every week yes. if I can. I love AMC A-list. Um, three movies a week. I see so many. Um, and I'm a big letterbox user. So I'm very into Shout tracking. Shout out to Letterboxd. Shout out to Letterboxd. <laughs> sponsor also us sponsor too. us. Um, <laughs> no, I love tracking my movies. And like I love tracking what I've seen. It helps me figure out what my favorite movies are of all time. Yes. So number one, for sure, without a doubt, is a movie called Blue Bayou, which I know you've seen. Yes, now. and I love. Um, I, I love. am obsessed with that movie. Ethan recommended it to me. It's amazing. Go see <sighs> Justin it. Justin Chan directed it. It's just an amazing, amazing film. And not a lot of people have seen it, but I believe it's on Hulu or one of the streaming services. Yeah, and it's great. On demand, buy it, yeah. rent it. Go support that movie because it's beautiful. Beautiful. Um, and fully independent. It's, it's great. Um, the... Other movies I love, uh, my second favorite would be Slumdog Millionaire. Such a good love movie. that movie. Classic movie at this point. My third favorite movie is La La Land. I'm a really? big Damien Chazelle fan. He is my favorite writer-director. <coughs> that changes for me, but he is definitely my favorite writer-director right now, um, and I think will be for a while. Um, all of his movies, like Babylon's in my top ten. I l I'm obsessed with the movie Babylon. Um, Whiplash is in my top 10. I love that movie. So everything he does and Justin Hurwitz with his scores are just beautiful. My top three. Long-winded nice. way to say my top three. Nice. What are yours? Go ahead. So um, this is not my number one, but um, you know, along the lines of what you were just saying, Les Mis is one of my favorite like, is my favorite Broadway play, but it's actually one of my favorite films. The new, like, iterate 2012. Yeah. So I, like, Broadway is my first love, musicals are my first love. That's what got me interested in this industry in the first place. But to that point, it was a film that was acting first and singing second. Yeah. And it was like beautiful to And me. a bold choice to like, do that in a big the musical. Broken like that. Yeah. kind of like, oh, I'm sobbing, so my singing is not perfect, right? Like, I don't know. I just I love that film. My number one film, actually, and it's been this way ever since I saw it and I just can't replace it, is Remember the Titans with Denzel Washington. Classic. Like, Classic I, movie. I don't know. I'm a sucker for A, like, sports films. I don't know why. But it just marries <laughs> so many things because it's hilarious. Um, it talks about, like, racial issues in a way that's really, I think, digestible to, like, a wide media, of, yeah. wide group of people, wide range of people. Um, and I think that's a lot of what we do, right, is touch on heavy subjects, sometimes in a more in-your-face way. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But I think really, part of our goal yeah. is to be... Um, to include more people yeah. into the conversation yeah. and to help people see a different perspective by making it a little more digestible. And so um, that is still my number one movie since I saw it and I was like in high school when I saw it. Um, and I just recently showed it to my children and they loved it and I was like, yes. 
I would say my number three is a tie between two very different things. And so I would say The Holdovers, which came out this year, which was like Love it. I know. phenomenal life changing and movie. It's beautiful. like life changing and beautiful and like life changing, especially as a producer, I think. Super right? inspiring. Like it it like, showed me that you can make a movie where people can just talk and it can be amazing. One hundred percent. And I think it also made me really excited um, as a filmmaker, just like all the different elements that came together, right? Like I'm like, they chose this time period. And I think the story fits so well into that time period and oh, this yeah. location. And it's like, those are really, like, I'm like, how did they think of bringing these things together? And oh, it really yeah. made such a difference to the film. Um, and then the other, my other tie is so different. And this is just because <laughs> like, my heart, besides being a musical theater heart, is like, I am a fantasy sci-fi like person yeah. and a super nerd. And so it's like, all the Harry Potter films all tied into are it. just like <laughs> my favorite because like as a child reading those books, I literally dreamed, like had a dream, like wanted to sleep and had a dream that I was playing Hermione and like how the film played out before they ever made the first film. Like I saw the whole film in my mind and I was Hermione and I did not get cast as Hermione in real life. But like Boo. that was like, that Wish was that my dream. Happened. And so um, <laughs> one day I will make and start in like a fantasy kind of I film. love it. Well, this was a beautiful conversation. This was great. I had so much Thank fun. you. And guys, every single week you will see either myself, Stephanie, or maybe a special guest host um, on one of these chairs. Yeah. And we'll be interviewing some amazing, amazing people. So if you like this, please make sure you share this to all of your friends. Let people know that this is here. We are so excited to uh, be highlighting independent film and cinema and have these conversations yeah. every week. It's going to be so special. I can't wait. Can't and you wait. can follow me personally at Ethan Felizari, E-T-H-A-N-F-E-L-I-Z-Z-A-R-I on every single social media platform. Literally, I'm on, I'm on every single one. Follow me on Letterboxd, so that one's most important. Um, and you can follow CK Films at CK Films NY. And you can follow me at Stephanie C. Cologne, S-T-E-F-A-N-I-E-C. C O L O N, that's me on Instagram. Spell Stephanie's name right. Spell it, it matters. right. It's it matters. Um, it does matter because you won't find me otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> so please find me on Instagram. And again, shout out to CK Films. Please follow CK Films. Thank you guys so much. We will see you soon. Bye. <laughs>